A very good evening all, I'm Aditi Lama with the Wednesday night edition of South Asian News, Vision of Asia. We are coming to you from our studio in New York City. Welcome to the show. Let's begin the episode taking a look at the coronavirus pandemic and its impact. The world has surpassed 128 million cases of COVID-19 with nearly 3 million deaths. Here in the United States, we are at 551,000 COVID-19 deaths with now more than 30 million cases. While we wait to be vaccinated most of this nation, this week President Joe Biden has urged governors and mayors to reinstate mask mandates in states where it has been lifted as the country again faces increasing rates of infections and hospitalizations from the coronavirus. On vaccine, more than half of all seniors of the country have been now fully vaccinated and more than 16% of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, the trial of Derek Chauvin charged with the murder of George Floyd continued today with more witness testimonies describing what they saw when Derek Chauvin placed his knee on George Floyd's neck last year. Send us your comments on this ongoing trial and racism in the U.S. Email us on events at itvgold.com. With that, it's now time to begin the South Asian news segment. Here are the headlines. Pfizer says COVID-19 vaccine highly effective in children 12 to 15. Dr. Naveen Mehrotra, New Jersey. Expert Dr. Tushar Patel discusses coronavirus updates and vaccines, New Jersey. Rasha Joshi presents Holy Special 2021, Parlin, New Jersey. It's time for a short break on Vision of Asia South Asian news segment. We'll be right back. Welcome again. I am Niti Lama and this is Vision of Asia Wednesday episode of South Asian news. Let's take a look at coronavirus updates and measures. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky cited rising numbers and has urged Americans to wear masks, practice social distancing and has asked all to help halt this pandemic while vaccinations continue to speed up across the nation. She said billions of dollars are being distributed to communities that are disproportionately affected to help mount the most aggressive, equitable vaccination campaign in modern times. Meanwhile, more than a dozen states have lifted COVID-19 restrictions, including mask mandates, worrying experts all across the nation. On vaccine, more than 189 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine have been distributed and more than 147 million have been administered. All 50 states of the country on vaccines have announced their plan to open up coronavirus vaccinations to all adults by May 1st. More on this and the impact of coronavirus, we spoke with ITV Gold's health expert, Dr. Tushar Patel. Here is Dr. Patel. Could you still get uh, COVID-19 even if you've gotten the vaccine? Yes. So the variant definitely can spread uh, if, if you are fully vaccinated because no vaccine is 100% effective. We have seen with flu vaccines all the time. People who get the flu vaccine get flu next day, three days down the road or, or month down the road. So it is still a possibility. The, the chances are very, very minimal, but there is a chance of getting that, that infection from uh, other individuals who are infected. What's your biggest worry right now? The biggest worry right now is weather is getting better. People started traveling. They think the pandemic is over. They can just freely move around without a mask. They can do the social gathering. My sincere request to people is just follow the public health recommendations right now. And I think we are almost there, but we have to be careful next few months. Right, a couple of questions here for you, Doctor. I just have a few more left. Dr. Fauci says that federal COVID-19 guidelines will be much more liberal by 4th of July if U.S. cases drop as more Americans are vaccinated. My question is, how liberal should these guidelines be? So if 
by end of june if we have 70 percent people right now we are at 26 percent people vaccinated in this country mm -hmm. or 16 percent sorry 16 percent people are vaccinated so far and if we consider 20 percent 25 percent uh have, has immunity from the previous infection mm -hmm. we have about 40 percent people uh fully vaccinated or immune so we still need to reach that 40 more percent people vaccinated if we do that by june i think july 4th will be a, a good weekend to, to celebrate and uh, the debate over school openings uh, continues dr patel my question to you is how important is it for these educators and teachers and staff of the school to get the vaccine prior to going back to school um, you know the cdc has said it's safe to open it without them getting vaccinated they have even said that three feet distance instead of six feet is also okay how are you looking at it we have come a long way with school uh, closing mm -hmm. i think next two months if we can stay put if we can get the vaccines to all the teachers and the the workers in the school and and then open up the school it's okay to skip this year do the virtual uh, learning by september we should be fully back to school uh, in action in my opinion right you know today there was a, a big news doctor on uh, the pandemic and its origin um, there have been some rumors about coronavirus being originated in a lab in China. Um, however, you know, it's been linked to the wet markets and, you know, how it, they've been saying that the coronavirus came from a bat to human. Um, what can you tell us about the origins of coronavirus? I know WHO has given a statement. However, the United States has expressed concern over it. How are you looking at it? More, more research needs to be done before we can answer that question. I have heard that from few public health officials uh, on, on a national level as well. And I think uh, unless we have we have the definite uh, proof and, and uh, documentation, uh, I think it's too, too early to say that it's coming from the lab. At this point, we just need to go with the theory which was developed before. Right. And my last question to you, Dr. Patel, has to be about South Asian Americans. How are you looking at them in terms of COVID-19? And, you know, we've been talking about the fact that they are at high risk. Um, you know, are we still at high risk of COVID-19? So we are all, <clears throat> we are high risk of COVID-19 for sure. However, the good news is many 65 and above and people with comorbid medical conditions, diabetes, hypertension, respiratory disease, asthma, all those uh, South Asians are, are mostly uh, vaccinated. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm hearing from people that they got their vaccine, one dose or both dose or one dose of Johnson & Johnson. So that is a good news. If now, if they behave for next two months, just stay home, do the minimal activities outdoor and, and don't go in public places, wear the mask. We should be good to go for South Asians community. Um, actually, I want to do just one follow up question, Dr. Patel. When you're looking at uh, these COVID-19 numbers and everything, everything that we discussed today, could you give us a prediction for this month? I That's think this happens. month will be very critical, means coming month in April. Mm -hmm. Two things need to happen. We need to continue to follow the public health recommendations to decrease the new cases. And number two, we need to increase the vaccinations in all the states in, in, in the United States. And if we do that, I think uh, we should not have a number of new cases going more than 50,000. The goal is to bring the cases down to 10,000 or under, and then we can call this pandemic off and we all be safe. This week, the Indian American community has been celebrating and enjoying Holi 2021. One of the most prominent Indian festivals, Holi is celebrated with much fervor and joy in Indian communities across the globe, where traditionally people smear colors or gulal on each other with Holi rightly called a festival of colors. It is celebrated on the full moon day in the month of Falgun in Hinduism and also signifies the arrival of spring. The day also emphasizes the victory of good over evil, light over darkness and is also an occasion where people forget their grudges and get together in the festival of colors. This year saw different commemorations of Holi in COVID-19 pandemic with all adhering to COVID-19 guidelines and protocols. Such a celebration took place in New Jersey where well-known singer Varsha Joshi presented a Holi special musical showcase. Here are some highlights from the musical celebrations. And Yogesh Bhai. Yogesh Bhai, thank you so much. First of all, thank you so much for, uh, you know, giving us your 
hospitality in terms of the food which you make lovely and your place which is so good so i would like to thank for your extended support to me every time and we wish with this holy your business becomes really great for the new year of 2021 we all are at least trying to get out of this corona fear with vaccines and of course social distancing mask is going to be part like our cell phones okay so obviously mass is going to be part of uh, our personality i guess but then obviously we have to go on with our life and we have learned to handle corona that's what i would say and uh, thank you itv raja ji raja bhai raja bhai bhatti he is my like brother he is always there on the t this thing and of course we can use his services i will invite him for our uh, spring fest and for the gandhian society also which is on the 25th of april all the gandhian society core members butala sir he is here deepak bhai rajan bhai mahesh bhai uh, every all this very committed people for the society is here think about so, well, radha and krishna right because they their holy it could be in our version of temples it could be in all our temples we see there's you know radha krishna ke temple mein hai ya kahin pe bhi dekho to hamare yahan to usually even in us we used to have great holy festival in all the temples so let me start with one very beautiful radha or krishna ka bhajan it's not a bhajan it's actually a beautiful song but we'll do with that and then we'll we'll go with our flow of nice musical songs and i know we have some singers mahesh rajan i don't know archana deepak bhai whether he feels like okay acha purvi hansa ben pachi falguni cha taiyar all right and of course uh, my dear they are there yes jai shri is here oh, so sayya tu kamal ka baati bhi kamal ki come darling if you want to dance sayya tu kamal ka baati bhi kamal ki laga rang jo tera hui main kamal ki pai re pai re pai re pai re pai pai re pai re pai re pai re pai pai re pai re pai re pai re pai re prem ratan dhan payo this is the dance floor this is the dance floor you can dance there come here dhan payo kisi ne na ki meri tune jo sambhal ki laga rang jo tera प्रेम रतन धन पायो मैंने प्रेम रतन धन पायो छायो गायो लायो आयो पायो थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट पार्ट ऑफ आई मीन First of all a big round of applause to Varsha Joshi for actually organizing such a beautiful event. Happy Holi to everyone. Uh we are part of an organization and Varsha ji is now become an integral part of it too. Uh we are Gandhian society so we actually promote Gandhian values, we promote Gandhian principles, Gandhian teachings and we do it in very uh, many various different ways. uh we actually do a lot of humanitarian work uh, not just in india but also across distressed communities in america so we are looking for people to come and join us on april 25th it's a sunday evening it's a free event uh, it's a interfaith prayer meeting uh, varsha ji has the flyer she'll probably send it across to all of you uh, the idea is to actually promote uh, love peace and uh, non-violence. non-violence so we i hope we all can come and join us and uh, you will get to see what we do what are the different projects we work on and see how you can get involved okay thank you thank hello you. and namaste everybody wish you very very happy holi in this year after this unprecedented times of social distancing direct thanks to corona we are trying to look back more, with more positivity to the new year to support our businesses to support our health and to support uh, our community and i am so blessed to have such good good uh, uh, company of very limited 20 something people with me at kitchdi junction in parlin new jersey and i would like to thank all the audiences who are here 
माय फ्रेंड्स एंड सबेन हेमंत भाई एंड ऑफ कोर्स द गांधीन परिवार गांधीन एसोसिएशन ऑफ नॉर्थ जर्सी मिस्टर बटाला जी इज हियर महेश भाई दीपक जी राजेन भाई दे आर ऑल हियर एंड आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक द सिस्टर ऑफ क्वींस दिस ब्यूटिफुल लेडीज वो आर हियर टू सपोर्ट मी एंड वन सेकेंड आई वुड से वी जस्ट प्रे दैट दिस ईयर रियली वी आर एबल टू कम क्लोज टू द living more naturally and more normally thank you so much and once again god bless you, thank you. thanks thanks and it's time for the short break on vision of asia voice of the community will be right back and welcome back i am aditi lama and this is vision of asia south asian news segment on covid-19 vaccines and more the drug company pfizer and its german partner biontech have said that its covid-19 vaccine is safe for and extremely effective in adolescents 12 to 15 years old in a study of more than 2000 adolescents pfizer found 100% effectiveness against symptomatic disease and a higher protective antibody response the drug company has also begun a clinical trial of the vaccine in children under 12 and started inoculation of children ages 5 to 11 just last week as a part of the trial the company plans to start testing the vaccine in even younger children ages 2 to 5 as well followed by trials in children 6 months to 2 years this comes as children have been one of the most impacted by the pandemic which has taken away any sense of normalcy for them debates also continue on how to send kids back safely to school On this and the impact of coronavirus in children we spoke with pediatric specialist Dr Naveen Mehrotra here is Dr Mehrotra for children i have a breaking news that has come in today on pfizer which has said that their vaccine is 100% effective for children from the age of 12 to 15 years old the shots are safe your comments i think this is a uh, a great uh, news that we uh, that we're seeing today that we're hearing about today uh because our biggest fear has been you know how are the kids going to get vaccinated because none of the current vaccines are approved for kids under 16 years of age so now as we're slowly bringing that age factor down it's getting to be more of a relief at the end of the tunnel uh we still have the group of kids 12 and below mm-hmm. that are still uh not ready to have a vaccine yet so we i think this is great to be able to shift that age group down from 16 to 12. So definitely I think this is all positive news. So I'm really excited about that. Dr. Marosro, I would like to ask you why you think children were not included in the prior trials of COVID-19. They excluded children and pregnant women at that point. Um now pregnant women can get the the vaccine shot and we're seeing that happen, but for children, why were they not included? Was it too risky to give it to children or were they just not a priority according to you? Well I I think it was multiple factors um you know our biggest concern at that point was to try to get the adults as safe as possible because the biggest uh, amount of mortality that we were seeing the the largest number of uh deaths that were happening were in adults we wanted to get something that was out there ready to go for adults and to get kids involved into any sort of a clinical trials is much much more involved um it's uh, you know you're taking minors into a clinical trial who are not able to speak up for themselves so we really didn't want to jeopardize that so i think at that point uh that was one of the reasons the other reasons was that the kids who were getting uh covid what we saw about 98% of them were doing very well and they were you know uh coming through with just uh maybe minor symptoms and a very small percentage was really getting affected adversely so i think it was a combination of all of that and now that we have a vaccine that is good for adults uh that is effective for adults we are trying to shift our focus and make sure that the kids also have an option to be safe if you were to look at some age groups doctor uh, what are the age groups according to you in children and young adults that have to be vaccinated as soon as possible i think all kids do because nobody really has an understanding of what is the role of kids in the overall covid picture right so we know that kids go ahead and transmit that they're carriers um but what rate of transmission do they uh, are they uh, what do you call responsible for we don't have a very good handle on that so i think every child who can be protected against covid 
should be protected. So the trials need to continue to include as many kids down to as young an age as possible. Um, when we talk about the flu vaccine that's approved for kids up to six months of age, because typically in the first six months of age, you assume that the, the um, immunity is coming through the mother's milk, through the mother's um, transmission. And then after six months of age, we want the kids to go ahead and build their own immunity. And that's where uh, we want to get the COVID vaccine down to as low as possible, up to six months of age, eventually. What are you hearing around you about when this could be available for children? We are saying that probably in about 2022 is when, uh, you know, will be a larger um, option available for kids. Uh, so until then, we're really up in the air. Right. We're hoping by the fall, that's what I think a lot of people are hearing in the news, that at least the older kids will be eligible for the vaccine and that we would have it approved by then. So we're looking forward to a positive fall season coming up for all of our kids. Right. Now let's go a little bit into COVID-19 and children. Doctor, I have a couple of questions here for you. What, according to you, has been the impact of COVID-19 on children that have gotten it? Um, you know, a follow-up question to that is how dangerous could COVID-19 be in children? Because I believe everyone thinks that children are just, you know, safe from it. And I, I think that it's not true. So I'd like for you to give a comment on that. Sure. The majority of the cases in kids, they um, might have fever, they might have some sore throat, they might have mild symptoms that tend to be self-limited. So they get better on their own. There is a small percentage of kids that have much, much more severe complications, uh, death, uh, MISC, which is the multi-system um, inflammatory condition that they get from COVID. So there is a possibility that kids can have very severe COVID disease, and we don't know what long-term effects are gonna be. So is there going to be an impact that comes in a year down the line or two years down the line? We just don't know that. But as it stands right now, 95 plus percent of kids do well with just fever and some mild symptoms. Right. The, the, the reason why kids also become an important part of the whole COVID picture, the transmission rate from kids to other, uh, you know, the seniors that are living at home or other adults that they're around is the biggest fear. Right. Could you give us some insight into this multi-system inflammatory syndrome that has been seen in children and how dangerous could that be? Uh, I don't think we have a very good handle on what it is and how it impacts the kids, but we do know that it can, you know, kids who have had COVID might be at risk for MISC where they can have multi-systems get involved. So those symptoms um, can land them in the hospital. They can land them and make them sick for months on end, which needs severe intensive care uh, for those kids to get better. Um, and, and I think uh, as time goes on, we will know more and more. As research uh, develops, we will know more and more. But until then, the probability of MISC is low. But if you know, they always say, there's always one kid that you know might have had it, and that kid is the one that's gonna be impacted the most. You know, we keep on talking about underlying conditions, doctor, when it comes to COVID-19 and how that impacts individuals. If there are children uh, with, uh, you know, underlying conditions that they're born with, are they also at high risk of COVID then? Uh, of course. And I think when they've uh, set up the eligibility criteria, those are some of the underlying conditions that they uh, go ahead and make them uh, be eligible for the COVID vaccine. So anybody who has a developmental disability, uh, multiple genetic disorders, uh, asthma, heart disease, anything that compromises your normal body function is something that can put you at risk for much, much more severe COVID uh, disease. And I think we don't really know a whole lot about that because they're just, we haven't been able to study it enough. It's still fairly new. Um, kids who have diabetes, type 1 diabetes. Um, so I, I think it, the, the list is exhaustive. Um, and there's probably kids that are not on that list that are at much, much more higher risk that we just don't know. Well, this wraps up our show for the night. Please send us your suggestions and get your voices and organizations on our show. Email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on Facebook 
at ITV Gold. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for free access to many of our popular shows. Thank you for joining us tonight from Queens, New York. This is Vision of Asia and I am Aditi Lamba. Take care and be well. Thank you.